Hey folks, David Stewart here. Time for some more philosophy. Philosophy Friday, Thinking Thursday. I'm not sure which day I'm gonna put these videos out on. Today it's when you measure the table, you also measure the ruler. You may have heard me say this before on stream. I may have written it in YouTube comments or on Twitter, or you may have seen other people use it like Nassim Nicholas Taleb, who has been known to utter this particular statement. What does it mean and what can we learn from it? Well, if you take a, a ruler and you measure a table and you say, oh, the table is six feet long. Not only have you measured that the table is six feet long, but you've also determined that a foot is one sixth of a table length. And so the essence of this is that uh, contained within a measurement is an assessment of the tools which are used to measure it because measurements are referential, all right? Uh, an inch may be standardized, um, but if you are trying to create a tool set, you're trying to create a measurement for something that hasn't been measured, whatever results you get there uh, are gonna be able to refer back to what you have there, your original tool set that you've used to measure. So uh, the way that this can really be important for how you view the world is if you see results that are absurd, chances are there's some amount of absurdity there. The tool set that's used to measure it is probably miscalculated. Now I'm going to, or miscalibrated rather. Now I'm going to harp a little bit on the psychology profession because this is very, very prominent in psychology and social science as well. But psychology has a clinical aspect to it that I think uh, gives it a little more gravitas in people's minds. Um, but one of the problems that you get with some things in psychology is the conjuring up of disorder. A really good recent example is something like um, toxic masculinity, that they're trying to create some disorder that involves toxic masculinity. The problem is, is that identifying toxic masculinity involves taking the normative traits of 50% of the population throughout time and determining those to be disordered. Uh, that in itself defies the nature of disorder. So if most men, in fact, the vast majority of men throughout history would fit into the disordered class, then you haven't actually created a class of, of disorder. You haven't identified anything that's problematic. You've only identified what is normative. And in fact, the what's outside of that may actually be disordered. So the whole idea of disorder is that disorder is not the majority, right? Disorder is something other than the normative value. And you have this actually in several different um several different psychological classifications. Autism is another one. We used to joke in education that everyone is autistic if you're willing to try hard enough. If you're willing to, in other words, when you're really willing to have someone be autistic, if you really think they ought to be, you can run enough tests and you can frame the results in enough different ways that you can produce uh, you can produce a diagnosis of autism. That What that really means when we're trying to measure someone for autism and anyone could be autistic it means that the ruler, the tools that you use to measure this disorder, autism spectrum disorder, um, is not really objective and it's not really set up in a way that's designed to actually uh, identify that which, dis that which is disordered um, rather than that which is ordered. So whenever you uh, are testing something and you end up with the normative being classified as the exceptional, uh, you have a problem with your tool set. It gets even worse actually with psychology with something like the DSM, uh, the diagnostic manual that ends up being used in psychology. They put out several editions. I think they're on five, number five now. Um, if you look at this as a whole, uh, there's another joke in psychology that every person's crazy if you look hard enough. Uh, I don't know the exact wording, but I've heard several psychologists give that. Is In other words, if you take this, this DSM as a literal book of all possible you know disorders and you go through all of them, and you find all the check marks, everybody is gonna fit into some categories having disordered. And that itself means the entire package as, as a whole is a set of measurement tools which has to be suspect and has to be brought into question. Uh, because obviously the majority of people shouldn't be classified as having a disorder. And if you say, well, everybody has a psychological disorder, it's like then nobody has a psychological disorder because that defies the nature of disorder right? 
that defies the nature. If everyone has a personality disorder, then really nobody has a personality disorder. We just have different personalities. Um, so the the identification of something that's truly disordered, by its very nature, is usually something that is outside what we be, what we would consider normative. And this is especially true when you look at things over time. Over time is a big one, because if you have the same set of criteria. 30 years ago and the exact same way of the exact same tools and it's bigger today then you you can really maybe see an increase you can actually have some validity there if the majority of people are disordered today and under the same tools the majority were not disordered 30 years ago you may actually be able you may actually be testing something accurately so looking at things over time is important the dsm also has problems over time because with each revision of it you have a change in what you're using to identify it. Uh, one of the things with autism spectrum disorder, people think there's been some large increase in autism, uh, but the reality is, is that what has increased is your ability to identify people as autistic. In other words, 30, 40 years ago, people who would be identified as autistic were not. Um, if, they were, if you were gonna use today's standards back then, much more people would have been identified as autistic. Um, so most of the, in fact, virtually all of the increase in autism is due to the fact that you've changed the definition. So you aren't looking at an increase over time when the definitions change. Likewise, there's certain things that have disappeared from the DSM, uh, including classifications of things like homosexuality as, as being a paraphilia, um, things like I think there's some attempt to get rid of gender dysmorphia or dysphoria or whatever word they're attaching to it to, to transgender people to get them out of a disordered classification. Um, and so that actually is something that is also measuring the ruler, but in the opposite direction. So if your tool set is so broad that everybody qualifies as disorder, you've got a problem. Likewise, if huge, tiny minorities that are very extreme uh, and extremely different from the normative value do not qualify as disordered, you also have a problem with your tool set. So getting rid of something like gender dysphoria from uh, the DSM means that this tiny percentage of people who are highly disordered, um, in fact, that's why they seek medical treatment for it, including hormones, this tiny group of people that are highly disordered are now no longer qualified as disordered, which again defies the meaning of disorder. So this is uh, this is an ongoing problem, but it's certainly not limited to psychology. If it feels like it's a whipping boy, it's, sim it's simply because the nature of psychology uh, allows for these things to happen more so than uh, in something like biology. But you can get the same sort of problems in biology, uh, depending on what you're trying to measure and what kind of tools you're trying to measure. It. Certainly in economics, you have this problem um, happening again and again, where if you're trying to measure economic success by GDP growth or something like that, and you're not you're not taking into account inflation or um, consumer price index stuff, then you're not really accurately measuring it. Or you have problems where you're like, oh, the, well, the standard and poor's 500 can, has gone up so much. It's like, but does it include the same number of companies? Like, is your tool set actually accurately representing it? Because if the people on the ground are told that the economy is booming and they're broke, they're not really going to look at that tool set as accurate. Meaning uh, when you measure the table, you also measure the ruler. They're going to think that the ruler is not calibrated correctly because it's not coming up with a, a it's not coming up with the result that matches the evidence of their senses. So if you have an absurd result, chances are there's something absurd going on with the measurement. And uh, so that's basically it. Um, if you measure the table, you measure the ruler. Let me know what you think about that down below. Give me some more examples of this uh, that you can think of. Um, I think our world is actually rather full of, of problems uh, with measurements, uh, measurements that are designed to measure something specific, and then we assume that they are accurate and objective, uh, when in reality, the nature of all measurement is that it it always refers back to what is measuring it. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.